All right, December 2023, Armor Alley update. Lots of improvements on mobile devices, now closer to the desktop experience. New game menu, radar zoom options, and much more. If you're not familiar, the tutorial will help give you a crash course. How to fly, how to fire the weapons and bombs, refuel, order convoys, and all that fun stuff. I'm going to exit because I am familiar. To give a quick demo, all the original battles and levels, including those on the network, are now included. You can pick a battle, pick a difficulty, and then start. Radar now has a scaling feature, and this can give you greater visibility into incoming units, as well as showing your relative position and visibility within the battlefield. Units now have a white glow when they are eligible targets and red when they are actively being targeted by missiles. Now, when your radar isn't being jammed, I call these scan ranges, and they indicate the line of sight. And these are handy because they give you an idea of when you're about to be fired at by items such as missile launchers and turrets. Another detail that you may notice, when you enter a cloud, it will now slowly start to float toward the enemy base. I decided to add this because I thought it added an important strategic element to the game. And that is, you'll notice that it's very strategically handy to float over enemy targets, certain enemy targets, and evade being shot down. Particularly in the extreme version of the game, where the turrets fire incredibly fast. Lots of new options. So, one thing that people had asked for is the game speed control. This was in the original game, and you can actually slow down the entire thing or speed it up. This was back in the day when we used to have turbo buttons on our PCs. There are more environment effects now. I can explain the battle over sequence later. Uh, there's a nicer star field effect, and if you want, you can up the number of stars and also turn the color off. So if you wanted the more night starry sky, yeah, there you go. Pretty, I think it looks nice. And then uh, there's a little bit of a gratuitous warp effect as well. So the further out on the battlefield you are, the larger the return to base and warp effect. I think that's quite nice. There are now more updates from the field. So if I have a missile that takes out a tank off screen, we get notified. And you can configure the types of notifications that you receive. You can also change the positioning of notifications to be top aligned, bottom aligned, or on the left or the right. And this is especially handy on mobile devices where you might also have mobile touch controls. The range UI can be disabled for friendly or enemy units. So let's say like in this battle, you have a friendly missile launcher and there is its range. And let's say that's noisy and you don't want to see those. So let's say I want those off here. There you go. And now it's only on the radar. And if you want to turn off the radar there as well, that can be done. And that should tidy it up. I've rolled a bunch of options into this one section. So I added, just for fun, these heat-seeking rubber chicken and smart banana missiles. They're basically just different looking um, options and sounding options for the originals. Smart missile upgrades changes a bunch of small behaviors about missiles. So the targeting UI is the halo and the red dot I mentioned previously. Retargeting ability is so that if a, if a missile is chasing something and it dies, like a balloon, or if it's a helicopter and the helicopter goes into a cloud, the original game, the missiles would just expire. Uh, but with this option enabled, now they can retarget and find something new. And if they find something new, then they can chase that. Uh, additionally, there is now a decoy risk. So if within half a second of launch, uh, you drop a paratrooper, then it's possible the smart missile could go after that instead of you. 
And then finally, and I drew inspiration from a well-known movie, missiles take a moment to become armed. And so it's possible that if a missile is very new and you run into it, it won't kill you. And so that can be uh, a strategy when you're against the enemy and sometimes a challenge when you're a little too close to your target. For whatever reason, uh, the original game never showed the flags or the arrows on super bunkers, and I've decided to fix that or give you the option to fix it. It was confusing because previously you would have to shoot at the bunker and see if your gunfire bounced off it or not, or you try to land and hit it and die. And so I thought that that doesn't make sense. So now the arrow is shown and an upward arrow. This is a new indicator uh, in, indicates neutral state, which is also considered hostile. So that's dangerous to both sides and super bunkers, as you'll recall, uh, can be armed by infantry. So that is infantry go inside and they, they arm the guns in the super bunker. Tanks clear out super bunkers um, and, and they kill the infantry and they bring super bunkers back to neutral state. When they're neutral, they're dangerous to both helicopters. So you can crash into them. Um, other units, when, when a super bunker is neutral, they'll just pass by. A little bit confusing, but there you go. By default, landing pads were not shown on the radar. This gives you the option to see them. And it was also interesting, I noticed that uh, I thought, well, sometimes there's shrubbery that kind of hides the landing pads. It's overlaid on the screen. So I thought, why not also hide them on the radar? I thought that was a fun little detail. Uh, historically, clouds were not shown on radar either. And I thought, given those could be used strategically, I think it's useful to have that information showing on the radar as well. Originally, and this, these are older options, engineers can repair bunkers if you like. Initially, the original game, they only really interacted with turrets or guns. Uh, enabling to rob the bank is also, I think, a great feature, kind of like in the game of chess. When you get a pawn to the other side, it becomes a queen. I thought it should be rewarded for their uh, risk in the sense of getting all the way across the battlefield. In the original game, tanks could sometimes blow up a bunker while trying to shoot at something behind it. And this seemed like kind of a bug or undesirable behavior, so that's an option. It's been an option for a while. Um, auto flip is mostly for mobile devices, but you can use the F key uh, to toggle this or double click on a desktop and then there's uh, double tap on mobile will have the same effect. And I had some feedback about the timing of some of the helicopter weapons and actions. So if you want the classic feel, this is the checkbox for you. A couple notes on performance here. So I've spent a lot of time and it's been an ongoing thing trying to optimize the frame rate, the rendering of the game, reducing the CPU usage, and trying to have a smooth 30 frames per second. And a lot of that comes from getting rid of just dropping the number of things on screen at once, optimizing the amount of work being done, putting things on the GPU, that's the, the graphics card, and eliminating paint. Uh, that's, in this case, Chrome DevTools showing green flashes indicating slow paints here. And so it's quite nice to have the whole world scrolling by and most things not being painted in green all the time. So less green generally equals faster. And this can be pretty tricky stuff sometimes. So it's been really nice making those continuous little gains over time. I've also been working on optimizing the boot time for the game. And I've got 350 kilobytes over the wire in a second or less. I'm pretty happy with that. There's one more bonus theme or sound pack. Call it what you want. But I didn't demonstrate. I think we're in for something special. And indeed, if you do this, you will be in for something special. <laughs> I couldn't help okay, myself. Okay, Let's kick a little ass. 
<laughs> basically, you have commentary from these two <laughs> I just thought of as you play the game. We're all gonna die. <laughs> oh, wait, really? How come? Uh, <laughs> We're all gonna die. What's going on? Go figure. I'll leave the rest to you, but it is chock full of sound effects and samples and references, and it makes me laugh. All right, live demo time. We're gonna play Wasteland, which is the second last battle in the original campaign mode on extreme mode. So this is a fairly challenging one. First thing I like to do is order some inventory and then hurry up out there and take out the, the nastiest things. So the turret will fire both at you and at certain ground units like tanks in this mode. So real nasty stuff. The kind of things you want to take out right away if you can. Sometimes it helps to hide in a cloud. Ugh. Too many tanks. Need more infantry. Ooh, that was a near miss. You can sort of lob bombs, but accuracy's not not great. Safer is to float over there. There we go. Alright, now we're cooking. Uh, need a tank, though, to get through that super bunker up ahead. It's still armed, and so the those infantry are going to get taken out. So, much more interesting is to get over to the center landing pad area. That convoy will make its way while we... Run ahead. Just for a little shield, I'm going to take that bunker. That's why. Bunker's taken a bit of a beating here, but uh, hey, that's okay. That's their job. Whoops. That was a miss. And I think I lost a bunch of infantry on that, too. Unfortunately, I think the next thing is take out the oncoming tanks. They will take care of the rest. Our guys, there are tanks, I mean. Whoops. Keep an eye out for that guy. 
and then let's forge ahead and see about taking out that next bunker. try to save that tank uh, way up ahead, but there's a bunker in my way, and I'm out of range. Took out my van, that son of a gun. Here we go. Maybe. Nope. Ah. Not looking great. I mean, it's okay, but uh, I wish I had more everything, more funds, more stuff on the way. Just gonna slowly move forward here. It's not moving my mouse around so much. to the tips. Yeah, that works. And they'll take the uh, little bunkers too. Clear the way though. ammo. And then we're going to lose that tank as a result too. But we can see that next group through. No problem. This is bad. Okay. So, yeah. Those guys are gone. That was close, though. Oh, man.
the super bunker has been powered up again. Oh boy. Okay, here goes nothing. Try to help our tank out, but if they get within range of that turret, we are in trouble. In trouble. I barely got any ammo left. Ugh. We're all so close. Maybe I should have waited on deploying those infantry. Did I mention this is challenging? It's challenging. <laughs> strategy. We hold off a little bit, let the enemy come to us, which is what they tend to do. Lean back a little bit and, and wait. Although, that's not very fun. left to use it wisely. Five infantry so I can keep those engineers off that. This is looking good. Except for that tank. Well, that's, that's okay. Except we're going to get the advantage on that if that, okay, good. Alright, I'm going to go make a run for it. Steal some funds? Yes, we did. That works. It looks like we got a turret over there. Hopefully, come on, there we go, there it is. Just in the nick of time. Excellent, so... We basically secured that area for the time being. This is very good. As long as I can get over there before that upcoming group, uh, which will take a... Oh, never mind. Because of the tank, turret's firing at those guys, so... That's fine. I'm actually going to do something a little unorthodox and speed up the game here. With the sound sped up as well. Just to move things ahead a little bit.
Now this is interesting. We've got that. The thing is, vans are incredibly vulnerable to shrapnel and everything else. So you basically have to shield them uh, with your own helicopter all the way along um, when they're in this kind of situation. But with any luck, might just have this down. I think so. There it is. Alright. There it is. Battle 9. Completed. So. We now get letters from the the old tanker. This was in the original uh, battle handbook. And then the next thing is on to the next battle. I will leave that to you to take on on your own time. Thanks for watching.